hope I'm in shock. So with the release of the trailer for the more but the release of Hannah kind of Brown's trailer for Murder on the Orient. <laughs> Why am I saying it? I feel it. That's gonna be the one. <laughs> Why can I say Murder on the Orient Express? For the Murder on the <laughs> So with the release of Kenneth Branagh's trailer for Murder on the Orient Express this week, I thought now would be the perfect time to talk about Agatha Christie. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then there were none. And one of my favourite books that she has written. I haven't read a lot of her books, but this one is probably going to be up there one of my favourites. And then there were none was written by her in 1939 and it was released under this title that I cannot say after the British song that serves as a major plot point. They have to change it obviously in America because you know it's a bit dodge. So I think it was changed to Tenil Indians but then it was subsequently changed to what we know it is now. In my version of the book instead of calling it Indian Island it's now called Soldier Island so you know. Yeah. So the novel starts off by introducing her 10 characters that all have been lured to an island off the coast of Devon with different reasons such as a kind of an old flame or an offer of a job. The only thing though is they've all been complicit in the deaths of other people but they've all managed to escape conviction. On the eve of everyone's arrival at a dinner a gramophone is playing explaining why they're here, that they're not here for a bit of laugh, they're here because they're going to pay for their crimes. Agatha Christie has brought 10 human beings to one little island to die one by one until there are none. They're the only people on the island and one by one the terrible ten are killed off parallel to the deaths in the rhyme. Yeah? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> <laughs> and what Agatha Christie does with this novel, Quentin Tarrant who know equally does with The Hateful Eight. <laughs> <laughs> by gathering these ten hateful people in the one place. And then trapped in there once the location is hit by a snowstorm. It's practically the Tarantino take on Agatha's whodunit. On an Agatha Christie whodunit. On, on Agatha. On an Agatha Christie's who done it. An Agatha. An, All right. An Agatha yeah. Christie who done it. Okay, it's practically a Tarantino take on an Agatha Christie who done it. Bro. <laughs> Stop throwing me treats. <laughs> Obviously, it's not just a take on one of her novels. It's also reminiscent of John Carpenter's The Thing and Spaghetti Western, all thrown together in the way that he's best known for. Agatha never wrote about exploding body parts or, you know, naked death marches, but it's still really clear that he is influenced by her storytelling. So there are three main similarities to And Then There Were None and The Hateful Eight. The obvious one is being the fact that... Bean. Bean. Uh. <laughs> Will you stop? The most obvious one, of course, is being the fact that all these people are in the same place at the same time. From the beginning of both, it feels as though there's a setup happening and it could be any one of these people present that has sinister plans. Well, well, well. Looks like Minnie's half dash is about to get cosy for the next few days. So the second is poisoning. This is present twice in And Then There Were None and it plays a turning point in The Hateful Eight. The first person is killed in the book at the dinner table, just as Kurt Russell's character, John Root the Hangman, and the stagecoach driver are both poisoned at the dinner. Both are privileged moments and once they happen, the violence only increases from there. Somebody poisoned the coffee. The third one is Henny. You're very happy to tell me that. The third one's Henny. <laughs> <laughs> Daisy Darmague and Vera Claythorne are both hanged. Vera hangs herself, but the noose was already set up for her by someone else. This is such a shocking moment, but it's so well written. Daisy is hung by Major Mark Lee Warren and Sheriff Chris Mannix. This is such a ruling scene as they laugh while hoisting her up to the ceiling by the neck. Now that was a nice dance. <sighs> That sure was pretty. Is it really well written, that bit? Yeah, it's very, very good. There have been many Agatha Christie adaptations in the past, including this video game. I haven't really seen many of these movies as much as I really want to, but from what I've researched, there's only a few that are regarded great, such as Murder on the Orange Express, released in 1974, Deaths on the Nile, released in 78, and Witness for the Prosecution, released in 57. These are only three movies that I mentioned now, easily 30 plus movies. So if you're a fan of her literature, there are plenty of movies to check out. Mo movie, them. movie, movies. Movie, movie, movies. Some films. <laughs> Some films. Try it again. These are only three movies that I mentioned now, easily 30 plus. So if you're a fan of her literature, you should definitely check out the library. But sure, what do I know? Hooray! I really, really hope you liked it though. 
And if you want to see more, you can check out some of Patrick's videos. But sure, what would he know? <laughs> two hours sitting on this bed. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I hope you liked it. Yeah? Boo. Will you stop throwing my teeth at me? Because if I keep eating, I'll never stop.